or to this computer. Okay. Uh, so our guest today is, is April Wang, who's a PhD candidate at the University of Michigan School of Information. She's advised by Dr. Steve Oney and Dr. Christopher Brooks. And interestingly, she her research interests are in human computer interaction. And that's probably something that most of us just kind of take for granted these days, but it's actually a very important aspect of research as anyone who has known, who has uh, become frustrated by, by, by shopping um, self checkouts uh, knows how, how important this is. Our guest today focuses on a variety of topics, but one of one of the focuses is on is on data science. And these days, most of us are trained to use computational notebooks to do our data science. And, and so I guess today is gonna, is gonna talk to you about that. Thank you very much, April. Okay, hi folks. Um, hi folks over Zoom and uh, yeah, so um, today I'll be sharing my research on designing future computational notebooks for collaboration and learning. Um, and I think this is quite an interesting audience. Like we got HCI people, we got data scientists. So I'm really looking forward to see what kinds of feedback uh, you have for the topic I'm working on. Okay, I want to start by talking about, you know, we live in this world where everything can be tracked into data. Um, and then with more data are generated, the demand of data scientists is continuing to grow in recent years. And data scientists actually benefit from collaborations to leverage expertise from each other and to improve the efficiency of their work. And of course, computational notebooks like Jupyter Notebook have been widely used for writing and sharing data analysis. Um, and for those of you who haven't heard of Jupyter Notebook, data scientists often use computational notebooks for collaboration. Computational notebook give data scientists a convenient and interactive solution uh, for sharing and keeping track of data exploration process. It allows people to weave together source code, narrative text, visualization, computational outputs, and other sort of rich media into computational narrative, an executable rich media that tells the story of the analysis process. And they also benefit data scientists to collaborate with each other and to improve the quality and efficiency of the work because they're not just sharing a reproducible code, they're sharing a story, a narrative to each other. Uh, but however, collaboration is never an easy task. Like even if you haven't had the experience of authoring a computational notebook, just think about the experience of writing in Google Docs and over leave with your colleagues or or programming on the same code base. Um, now I want to do a quick poll. Please raise your hands here, or you can give me a sum up in Zoom if you have ever had an evil collaborator messing up with your documents. <laughs> okay, yeah, I see a few hands here. Um, and maybe for folks who don't raise your hand now, probably because your collaborator is in the Zoom or <laughs> in a meeting. Um, yeah, but I'm sure you all have those um, moments where you have an un unpleasant collaboration. Um, but things are even worse in data science collaboration right? because data science doesn't just involve the form of writing plus coding. It is this complex process um, of reasoning about some ideas, testing about some ideas and actually implementing them. Um, due to the exploratory nature of the work, Data scientists frequently write draft code to experiment, explore, and test hypotheses. Thus, it is difficult for them to maintain an updated explanation and a clean notebook during the exploration process. And when the problem gets complicated, data scientists tend to write lower quality code, leave documentation incomplete, change execution order, or accidentally overwrite important analysis while iterating on different ideas. And these tensions can be amplified in a collaborative setting where it is important to keep a shared understanding of past design decisions among different team members. So in this talk, I would like to convince you that data science practitioners and learners benefit from collaborative data science tools, but the tools today are limited in supporting their various collaboration needs. 
and we need better tools for supporting their needs. So towards this goal, my research explores barriers in real-world data science collaboration practices and prototype new interface for suggesting better collaboration tools. More specifically, I conducted mixed methods inquiries to understand the current challenges in collaborative data science. I built systems for improving collaboration for data science practitioners, and also I looked into how we can design those collaborative activities for support future data scientists. Okay, let's start with the first part. We begin by asking this question, how do data scientists currently use computational notebooks for collaboration? Um, through a formative study with 195 data scientists, we probed into the tools and strategies they've used. And our high level takeaway from the survey is that um, there are two types of ways that people work. Synchronous, synchronous notebook editing tools are relatively new and they're not widely used among data scientists. Most people work in the traditional collaboration setting where team members work on individual notebooks and update each other's work asynchronously. With this more holistic understanding, we decide to narrow our focus and probe into the differences afforded by these two settings. Like is synchronous notebook not, popular, not, not being used because they're relatively new or because it's not useful for data scientists. So we conducted an observational study with 24 data scientists working in groups of two to solve a predictive modeling problem. And we find that synchronous editing benefits collaboration by reducing communication costs. Participants in the non-shared condition relied more on Slack to send files, code snippets, and outputs. While participants in the shared condition are less distracted about these low level coordinations, and they have more time to focus on more important issues. And this relates to our analysis of the final submission. We looked into the error scores of each submission, the number of alternative model that participants have explored and the lines of content in the notebook. Um, we didn't really find like a very significant differences in the performance, uh, but we do find out that the number of alternative models and then like the art artifact that they produced is much longer and they have time to do more stuff um, in a shared notebook. Despite these benefits, we discovered several challenges in using the collaborative notebook. And let's take a look at an example. First, working in the same notebook can disturb each other's work. Um, two participants in the shared condition have different preferences for naming style. One person likes to call it the train DF, the other person likes to call it DF train, and they obviously don't like each other. Um, as one participant complained, when using Jupyter Notebook together, it's hard to keep track of variable names. Everyone might use a different name and may cause issues. And also working on the shared notebook also requires more strategic coordination. We discovered full collaboration style and we aligned it with an existing framework of collaborative writing. The first style we discovered is called single authoring. Most obviously one person will do most of the work. And pair authoring, where one person did the majority of implementation and the other people contribute ideas and engaged in discussions. Divide, divide and conquer, where members divided the task into sub-goals and explored the sub-goals independently. And competitive authoring, where team members will wrote the code for the same purpose, like for example, data pre-processing, and they will use the, the code by whoever finishes the first or whoever's solution performs better. Um, and we observed that groups in the shared condition mainly use single authoring, pair authoring, and divide and conquer styles versus groups in the non-shared condition mainly use divide and conquer and competitive authoring styles. And these are like a style that they mainly used across their collaboration, but we also discovered that people switch strategies like in, in ad hoc. 
Let's take a specific example of Bob and Alice. When working on individual notebooks and they're not clear about the plan, Bob and Alice would both go ahead and explore the task on their own, even if they end up duplicating each other's work. But working on the same notebook, since Bob is aware that Alice is working on something, so he is unlikely to duplicate the work if, if knowing that Alice is already working on it. Um, but without splitting the task well, Bob may not know what to do until Alice finishes her part. And they may end up with Alice doing 80% of the work and Bob doing 20% of the work. There might be other cases, um, but the point I want to emphasize here is people need more strategic coordination when working on a shared notebook. Okay, here's a little recap on what we did. We present empirical insights on how people collaborate with computational notebook. And these insights lead to design implications to enhance collaborative computational notebooks. Um, and we affirm the benefit of supporting real-time collaboration. Um, so now real-time collaboration has, has been shipped into the newest version of Jupyter Lab. Okay. Um, Next, I wanna talk a little bit about the limitation of this study. Like we only looked at one specific scenario of collaboration and we asked people to like work together in real time. So you may wondering, um, what about other type of collaboration scenario? Like for example, the type of data science problem, the expertise of the collaborators, team size, synchronicity of collaboration, and whether a final narrative is the end goal may all affect how people use different tools or how they perceive the collaboration experience. Um, with collaborators across companies and institutions, we further conducted a set of inquiries to understand the needs and pain points of collaboration in various setup, um, including communication, communication challenges in multidisciplinary teams, knowledge sharing from domain experts to data scientists, and reusing analysis code among data scientists. Um, due to the time, I'm not going to elaborate on these studies, but I'm happy to chat offline if you're interested. Okay, so based on the findings from the qualitative inquiry, I have designed and evaluated new interactive tools to help collaborators make sense of a shared notebook. I grouped the designs into three themes. First, I explore designs to help people understand what their, what their collaborators did to a shared notebook. I then explored how to accommodate the collaboration needs for an async shared notebook. And I also looked into designs that help people further understand the impact of what their collaborators are doing, not just how the code has been changed. Let's start by looking at the following scenario. When teams of data scientists collaborate on computational notebook, their discussions often contain valuable insights into their design decisions. The, but these discussions are very long and disconnected from the computational notebooks. And imagine there is a message saying, there is a bug in the second cell. How should I know afterwards what the second cell was? by the time that the message was sent. Maybe that cell is already deleted. Um, so team members typically need to have a shared context to make sense of these discussions. And this can be particularly challenging as notebook evolves, as the data science team evolves. So in this project, we propose to improve collaborative data science by connecting these discussions with the computational notebooks. To better understand how these discussions can be useful, we analyzed the chat messages collected from three data science group projects. And in total, we collected 760 chat messages to understand their purpose, their relationship to the evolving notebook, and the specific aspects of the notebook they mentioned. And on a high level, we summarized the three design implications. First, chat messages are very useful for explaining the exploration process, especially when people don't have time to write documentation. But of course, they're difficult to follow. 
Um, and also notebook elements are frequently referred in those chat messages. Based on these, the implication, we propose Callisto, an extension to computational notebook that captures and stores the links between the discussion messages and notebook elements with minimal effort from users. Because they're already overwhelmed by the problem, we don't want to add additional costs for them to specify those connections. So how do we do that? Um, we first um, implement some basic sharing and real-time collaboration feature, including introducing a chat interface into the shared notebook. And now we're able to connect those messages and notebook content by some unique design that I'm gonna mention later. And then with these connections, we design different mechanisms for people to navigating between messages and notebook content. This is how the interface looks like. On the left-hand side, you see a history panel of what each um, of um, a timeline of um, what everyone is doing in the notebook. And on the right-hand side, you have a regular um, chat message panel and people can talk to each other. Um, the little innovation we did is uh, when people are sending messages, they can click on the magic wand to select the specific part of the notebook that they want to mention. And we call them references. And we designed several different types of references. First one is code references. They can use their cursor to highlight which specific code they're mentioned. And they can also say which specific cell they're mentioned. And we allow people to create annotations on the output so they can visually say which part of the um, graph they're mentioning to. Like in this case, there are two outliers in this graph. And then people could also make a reference to the snapshot to describe a history activity they do in the notebook. Um, like, for example, I just uh, updated the second code cell for something, and then you can point this message to that um, activity history. And lastly, people can also make a reference to a differences between two snapshots. Um, like for example, maybe at some point, um, I had a, a wrong result and then I did something to correct that result. So I can create a difference view between those those two timestamps and I can have my message pointed to that differences. Okay, now we're able to capture the connections through these explicit references created by users. What about chat messages that do not have explicit references? Um, like I mentioned about, you know, one general design principle we, we want to um, keep is we don't want to ask users to do too many things while they're busy with analyzing the data. And obviously they don't have time to work on the documentation. We use some um, mechanisms to automatically inference the connection between messages and code cells. Um, so it works in this way. When users send a message, it is likely to be relevant to a currently selected cell. Thus, Callisto will automatically attach a cell references to the currently selected cell if they do not have a, an explicit reference. And we give users the option to manually correct these errors from automatic inferences. Now that we have created connections between messages and notebook content, how can we use this connection? Callisto enables two broader uses of these connections to understand the context of a given message and to find out the part of the discussion that is relevant to a specific part of the notebook. When users click on the message, Callisto will highlight the relevant cell in current notebook. And in some cases, users may want to understand what collaborators were doing between messages. When selecting two messages, Callisto can navigate users to the diff view comparing two snapshots. And for the other way around, the connection from notebook content to messages 
explains why changes were made. Callisto allows users to see which parts of the discussion are relevant for a particular part of the notebook. Um, like for example, for the data pre-processing part, you may have some initial discussion about how you, how you and your collaborators want to do with the data. But later on, um, you may have some like discussions later on in terms of how you want to adjust to that data pre-processing plan. And these conversations might be like disconnected with each other. But with, with the connection between code cell and messages, we allow users to filter through all the messages that is relevant to a particular code cell. Okay, to recap the design, Callisto extends the notebook platform by enabling sharing and real-time collaboration, helping people connect messages with notebook content and navigating between messages and notebook content. And to assess how Callisto assists new collaborators when joining Collaborative Notebook, we designed a two-stage evaluation study. In stage one, we asked people to work in pairs in real time um, to test Callisto's usability for creating those connections and also to see how frequent do people want to use these explicit references and how accurate are those like implicit references. And um, in the second stage, we ask a third individual join this shared project um, and to retrieve those content and discussions either using Callisto or a light version without the contextual links. And we find out that Callisto can ease user onboarding to new notebooks by helping them understand the design rationales of its authors. Although the automatic inferences is not 100% accurate, um, but it's better like to give users something than give, you, give them nothing. As one of our participants put it, by reading the code, I know what they were doing, but with the chat messages, I know what they were thinking. Okay, here's a little recap. Um, we contributed the design of Callisto with a set of techniques to make chat messages more useful for understanding the past exploration process in notebook. But there is one clear limitation with Callisto. It only works when the two collaborators are initially working in real time and they do have discussion like take place at that time. What about like other cases that people work more asynchronously? I'm working on myself alone. I may not discuss with anyone. I just have the thoughts in my mind and I'm hesitant to write down these ideas and thoughts. So we explored other designs to um, help people understand what their collaborators did to an async notebook. One approach we think we could think of um, is to use more um, AI-based solutions to assist the code documentation. There are already like several state-of-art models about code summarization, uh, but they have never been used to apply to the data science context. So there are several questions like when we design this tool. First is where does the data come from? Um, traditional code summarization literature will use um, some of the benchmark data sets collected from GitHub. Um, so they'll extract um, code snippets and their documentation from open source projects. Um, and like their focus is more on how to improve the model's accuracy. So they tend to use like the same set of data. Uh, but when we apply that into our scenario, data science documentation is slightly different. It's more like domain specific. Um, thus, we collected computational notebooks and then we extract text and explanation pairs. And we collected those computational notebooks from Kaggle. So you may ask, why do we collect these notebooks from Kaggle, but not GitHub? Um, there are prior study done to analyze um, the GitHub notebooks. Um, so what they find out is um, it's quite different from how people share open source like software engineering projects. People put their notebooks on GitHub is not 
like not sometimes for like open source collaboration. It's sometimes more for themselves to play around with the code. So um, there is a actually a previous study by Adam Rue, uh, who's in uh, Wisconsin right now, uh, looking at those notebooks on GitHub and to like quantitatively analyze the, the composition of these notebooks. And they find out these notebooks um, are usually lack of documentation. Um, so what we did is we collected a bunch of notebooks from Kaggle, and we applied the same set of analysis on these Kaggle notebook. So what you see on the left-hand side, um, which are marked in red, are Kaggle notebooks, and then the right-hand side are GitHub notebooks. And we find that the Kaggle notebooks provide a better quality of explanation than GitHub notebooks. Um, and we trained a deep learning model using the attention-based graph neural network architecture um, based on an, an existing like code summarization model. Um, so what I like about these GN models is they can take both the source code structure, which we extracted them as abstract syntax tree, and the source code's content as input. Thus, it will outperform the traditional sequence to sequence model architecture, which only takes the source code content at the input sequence um, in those code summarization tasks for Python code. But in contrast to previous code documentation generation tasks, which focus on generating documentation for single code snippets, in computational notebook, there are new challenges in terms of how models should be designed. For example, um, in computational notebooks, one documentation in a markdown cell often corresponds to multiple code cells, and these code cells may have an inherent structure. Um, so one of my collaborators uses a hierarchical attention mechanism to consider the relevant code cells and relevant code token information when generating the documentation. So extended on that part, um, we have we actually explored a better model for automatically generate those documentation. But again, um, AI models can only help like a limited type of explanation. Um, so this figure is from our qualitative analysis of the Kaggle notebook. We find out that in a notebook, people not just explain the process that, that they are doing, they sometimes explain the results, they sometimes explain the reason why they're doing so. Um, sometimes they want to put some educational piece to explain um, what a model is doing or what techniques they're doing. And these are hard to be summarized by the state of art AI models. So what we did is um, besides deep learning based approach, uh, we also use the query based approach, um, which will recognize the, the specific API that people use with pandas um, or sklearn, and we will query those documentations from the official documentation site, and we will suggest people that as part of the explanation. Um, and then we also used a, a prompt-based approach for those more open-ended questions. Um, for example, um, if the output is a graph, we will prompt people to say, what, what do you like about this result? Um, could you explain more about this, this graph or this table? Um, and people can select a prompt to like, at least it gives them something to start with. Okay, so um, next we looked at how do people actually perceive these suggested documentation? Because um, sometimes with those like AI suggested systems, people will find them not useful at all to like, arbitrary rule based and they'll feel like annoyed with um, you know those frequent prompts. Um, we actually find out that in the context of data science documentation, um, people actually like this way to like give them something to start with. Um, it's kind of like writing a research paper, right? You can't start by like with the mindset of, I want to have a perfect paper. You start by something basic and you iterate on it based on your needs. So um, yeah, we find out that 
Semestral, um, I forget to mention the name of the system is Semestral. Uh, we find out that Semestral supports participants to easily add the documentation to a notebook. And then something interesting we find out is people are not like just take what the AI suggested. They're actually co-create with the AI models. Uh, like the AI model gives them something basic to start with and then they're adding more insights as they say the basic version of the documentation. Um, yeah, as one participant mentioned, the plugin makes it easy to just pick it and have something simple. And then I got a couple of times where I went back and said, oh, let me add a few more words. And it also kind of depends on people's need if they're just having keeping a documentation for themselves or if they later they decide to polish the notebook and to have the explanation for someone else. Okay, and uh, extending on this line of research, um, I further collaborated with um, folks from um, IBM to propose notebook to slides, an AI assisted slides creation tool for Jupyter Notebook. Notebook to slides uses deep learning methods as well as example-based prompts to generate slides from computational notebooks and take users' inputs, such as audience background to structure the slides. And with the help of these tools, data scientists can better understand what is going on with the analysis code. Um, so this is the second theme that I explored. So far, we've been talking about how people explain how they change the code. But I believe we only tackle half of the problem, differences in code. By looking at this explanation, I applied a log transformation to the data frame. You'll have an idea on what the people is doing, but you may not have a clear mindset of how that change actually impact the data or impact the work that you're doing. And I want to argue comparing versions of data throughout an analysis is just as important. Sometimes with your collaborator make changes to the notebook, they don't always produce like an immediate query to visualize the changes. So we advocate for adding visualizations of data differences as a core feature in exploratory data analysis environments. Let me give you a brief overview of the prototype. We choose to explore the design into a simplified notebook experience so that we can examine how people use it for comparing data tables. But this design can be easily integrated into either Jupyter Notebook or the VS Code Notebook rendering view. As you can see in the middle, there is a single code cell for people to write Python code. And the bottom part displays the, the code output and an overview of the runtime data table. And then the backend is connected to a Jupyter kernel for evaluating code. And every time the users execute the code, it automatically stores a snapshot of the code and runtime data tables. As users reflecting on the editing history, they can utilize both code diffs and data table diff to help them better understand the changes. For detail, we proposed a table-based diff view to visualize how each column has been changed. Users can also select to either compare different data sets or compare the data set at different snapshots. And for those specific visualization, we drew insights from InfoViz and we come up with three different type of um, ways to display the diff. So the first one is what we call parallel view, which is like the baseline version. It shows distributions of, of the column from the two versions side by side. It kind of simulates the go-to strategy that data scientists may manually use to plot and compare the edits. And the data view, which the, the delta view, which, which contains two parts. Users can switch between the distribution of the two data versions in top parts while seeing the subtraction 
between the two at the bottom. And the last view is the opacity view. It overlays the distribution of the two versions on the same axis and provides a slider for crossfading between the two. And last but not the least, Dito highlights the changes of summary statistics for comparing the data tables. And our evaluation finds out that uh, um, you really, in a collaborative sense, if you want to understand what your collaborators are doing, you have to perform manual query, and that will make your notebook less organized. Um, but with environments like Dito, you don't have to worry about those temporal queries. You can just have the built-in functions. And most importantly, a lot of times, you may not have the mindset of like comparing how things are changed, or you may not be aware of some additional side effect. Um, for example, this visualization is a visualization of a car data set. And let's say if your collaborator filter the cars, um, which are originated from Japan, you can see that you know this data has been changed, but you can also discover that maybe the distribution of the cylinders has been changed because of this filtering action. And you may it may help you understand how their code may impact what you're doing right now. Okay, so um, that's the three themes um, that I have designed. And uh, lastly, I wanna move on to talk about my other line of research to design for those future data scientists. Okay, I wanna start by saying collaboration needs in a data science classroom is different from collaboration needs in a, like among data science practitioners. Um, so think about what we have right now, right? You guys might be boring hear me talking like for 40 minutes. And if I'm the instructor at this point, I want to add some, you know, interaction exercises. And we have this perfect hybrid structure. Some of you are here in person, some of them are on Zoom. Um, you know, I could put people into groups, um, but with like students who are taking introductory programming, they may, they may not have the expertise to help each other and talk to each other about the code. And it's also like a, um, a limitation that there is no way for me to easily distribute the code to yourself or for you to exchange the code to your peers unless you're sharing a screen or um, you're just sitting next to each other. But it's hard to do everything like in a classroom in life. So we designed this exercise notebook, which is called Puzzle Me. It's a peer-driven in-class programming exercise tool. Um, for instructors, they can create a puzzle notebook with each cell being a programming question. And then they could share this puzzle notebook with students. So each student have um, access to the same notebook, uh, but students work like independently on those exercises. Um, and one collaborative activity we designed among learners is peer testing. We drew insights from um, educational theory on peer assessment, um, and uh, we actually break down the normal code editor into three parts. The first part is the setup code editor to specify given variables that change case by case. And then the solution code editor that consists students' solutions. And the assertion code editor, which checks the expected behavior of the code in a specific case. And students can create new test case by clicking the adding button and then edit the set of code and assertion code. So in this example, the instructor is asking students to write a code that extracts um, the last name from like a list of names. Um, and then, yeah, so the student, Alice actually creates a name list that contains middle names. So that might be like a tricky test case. Um, and then this test case needs to be verified before sharing with others. And we do it in a more automatic approach. So what we ask is a standard solution call from the instructor. 
And when students click on the run button with the new test case, Puzzle Me will automatically verify these test case by assuring it passes instructor's code and fails an empty solution code. And once the test case is verified, we share these test cases in real time with other students. So now everyone gets to see it and they can use it for testing their code. So in this example, the student Charlie may pass the default test case provided by the instructor, which don't have a middle name, but fails the test case created by their classmates Alice, which has this case of middle name. And our evaluation shows that students might feel more comfortable with those non-conversational interaction with peers, such as sharing and using test case created by others. And these test case not, might not be as thorough as those written by the instructors, but they save time and effort to enable real-time improvised programming exercises. And more importantly, this process of creating test case can help learners verify their understanding of the problem and to practice the ability to predict the outcomes for given inputs. And also it has this gamification mechanism that I want to create the weirdest test case that fell everyone's code. Okay, um, to recap, today I discussed three aspects of my research, understand challenges in collaborative data science, designing systems for data science practitioners, and also how can we extend these collaboration features to prepare future data scientists. Um, and next, I wanna briefly talk about some of the future directions that I'm interested in. Um, these are very broad. Um, so first, I want to understand how these collaboration needs and challenges can be generalized to other domain. Um, like for, for example, like urban planning, um, or I have some example here, um, you know, general software engineering, um, like collaboration real time in VS Code the live share or like remote surgery. And then a lot of those cre creativity tools uh, have real time sharing feature. But I believe that a good collaboration system is not simply to allow people like being able to edit the same artifact together. There must be some unique challenges in that problem context. Um, and in the future, I wish to explore more on how data science is different from other contexts or if there are some unique designs that we can do to accommodate that domain. I'm also interested in continuing to explore how can we design human-centered data science tools with emerging techniques. So far, my work has been focusing on the process of cleaning, labeling, or modeling, and then final presentation. But then there are this complete data science workflow and cycles. Um, and there are a lot of like unaddressed challenges and in particular collaboration challenges in this entire data science workflow. And I'm excited to explore all different techniques like AR, VR, visualization, programming synthesis, structure editing, or AI-assisted programming can help with and can help to address some of the some of the challenges in this data science workflow. And then lastly, um, with the thread of designing for future data scientists. I'm interested in this idea of um, democratization of data science tools. I believe that it's not just people who want to become data scientists needs to learn how to access data, how to pre-process data, how to present data, how to tell story from data, but everyone should have this ability to do so. And part, I believe that um, making data accessible to everyone is important because we're living in this data world. It's like, you know how to use phone, you know how to use those um, products and you get like privilege or you get benefit um, from doing it. But like with the world where there are more data, um, I think it's like equally important for everyone to know a little bit about data science. science. And then my approach to that is I believe it's important to design tools that allow people who don't have programming background to easily manipulate data and to create stories for their like personal use and to understand data, but also to like 
think about those different ways to educate people and teach people about data science. Okay, that's uh, three lines of future work I'm interested in. And uh, before I end, I would like to thank my collaborators, mentors, and mentees. All the work I presented today will not be possible without their generous support. And uh, yeah, that's all. I'm happy to take any questions. Yeah, thank you very much. Would you feel if you just remain unmuted? Yeah. You put the volume up on yours. Uh, so just a reminder, uh, April is, is on the on the job market. Uh, her website is aprilwang.me um, and, and recently updated. Uh, yeah. Looks very really nice. <laughs> and we do a lot of checking out. I think in the first thing to that. Uh, if folks have other stuff recording, we have a few questions. Yeah. Thanks.